Right, here's another video from my No Frills playlist. Videos that are designed to be straight to the point to maximise the number of marks you score in exams. This video is about investigating acceleration and is very important because it's a core practical, which means it's worth six marks. So if you mess this up in your exams, you're going to drop a level. So the first thing we need to know is how to investigate Newton's second law. We need to investigate the effect of mass on a trolley's acceleration. Now the effect of force on the trolley's acceleration can also be investigated, but won't be looked at in this video. And a challenge is to be able to plot a graph of your results and make a conclusion stating what you've found. So we've done Newton's second law before, both as a no frills video and as a normal video. So check out those videos if you need to. If we add more mass to a trolley, Will it be easier or harder to accelerate? Well, you'll investigate this question and find out the answer in the video. So how do we investigate Newton's second law? So a reminder from my last video. Newton's second law explains the relationship between force, mass and acceleration. And you get one mark for saying that in an exam. How much an object accelerates depends on the resultant force acting on the object for one mark in an exam and the mass of the object. Again, worth one mark in an exam if you can tell the examiner. So, Newton's second law is about the relationship between force, mass and acceleration. In this investigation, we're going to keep the force constant while we change the mass of the trolley to see how it affects the acceleration. You will need to know what equipment you need to use, how to set up the equipment and what measurements you need to take. And if you can do that, you'll get six marks in an exam. I've created a little animation so you can have a look at the experiment. Check this out. Now watch your toes as that car comes down and the mass itself. Ideally, you should have a bucket there in order to catch the car. You get one mark in an exam for seeing how to minimise the risks. So putting a bucket there full of crumpled up paper, that'll get you one mark. Right, for another mark in an exam, here's a top tip. Tell the examiner that before you attach a pulling force to the front of the car or any mass on the back of the car, you will... Incline the ramp slightly so that the car just starts to roll down the ramp at a steady speed. This will ensure that you make friction negligible, which means so small that you can forget about it. So you can see the incline there. I've just picked that green ramp up a little bit. I'd have to wedge a couple of books or something under there. And that car, if it just rolls just slightly, it shouldn't start to accelerate, but if it just rolls at a steady speed, you know that you've got the, the height of the ramp just right. Now here's a simplified picture of it. These light gates are the keys to the kingdom. We need to make sure that you know how to use those. So this light gate here, the first one, that's going to measure U, which is the initial velocity. Now I've explained how it does that in a previous video, but just in case you haven't saw it, this light gate would be connected to a data logger and in the data logger you type in how wide that card is. It's usually about 10 centimetres. Now it's called a light gate because there's a light in here and as that card passes through the light gate the data logger will do speed equals distance divided by time. So the distance is the width of the card and the time is the time that it takes for that card to pass through the light. This second light gate here is to measure the final velocity, V. And what the light gates will also do is a second timer will get set off that measures how long it takes to go from this light gate to that light gate. In other words, from the initial velocity to the final velocity. Here's a nice little table in order to put all your information in. So U, the initial velocity, would go in that column. V, the final velocity, goes in that column. And T, the time between the velocity measurements, goes in that column there. Now what's going to happen is this mass here is affected by gravity. So mass times by gravity is going to give us a downward force 
called weight. And we're going to keep that downward force the same. All we're going to do is change the amount of mass on the back of that trolley. So how do you investigate the effect of mass on a trolley's acceleration? Right, well you just keep this mass at the front the same all the time. This mass here is to create a downward force, that's the weight. And that's going to pull the car this way. That force there is going to be this force here. Now at first there should be no mass on the back of that car. And when you drop the weight, the car gets pulled. You'll get your U value and your V value and we'll know what the mass of the trolley was. And you pop that into your table. Then you reset the whole thing and put that first mass on. And repeat it to get a second reading of U and V with this corresponding mass. Now it's the total mass that you're interested in. The mass of the trolley added to that mass there. Then reset it again and do it with another mass on the back. And then another mass, then another mass, then another mass. And hopefully you've got enough results in order to plot a graph. So this is a nice table that you can use to collect your data. Once you've got your data, this is how to process it. So we use this acceleration equation here. So we need to take the change in the velocity and divide it by the time. So the change in the velocity is the final velocity v, take away the initial velocity u. I'll show you this example down here. So a equals v minus u over t. v is 0.92 in this case, u is 0.2 and time t is 0.6. And if you do that, it should come out as 1.2. So you put your acceleration you've calculated into that final column. Now, just in case you don't have the necessary equipment to do the experiment, there's a set of model results for you. All you need to do is use this equation in order to calculate the accelerations. Pause the video if you're going to do that. And here are the model answers. So check your answers against these answers to make sure you haven't got pork sausages for fingers and you've pressed the right buttons on the calculator. And finally, a little challenge. Can you plot a graph? of the results and make a conclusion stating what you found. There's a nice little graph paper for you to use. Take a screenshot. There's the results that you've got to plot. Just for your convenience, I've popped them into the corner. Once you've plotted the results, it should look like that. Now, just to make sure you know how I've done that, I'll show you how I've done the first couple. So the total mass of the trolley is 0.6. So go along to the total mass of the trolley. So that's the trolley and the masses on the back of it. And the acceleration was 1.2. So go up to 1.2 and put your cross on there. And then the total mass of the trolley and the masses on the back was 0.8. So go along to 0.8. And the acceleration was 0.9. So 0.8 was the mass. Go up to 0.9 and put your cross there. And that's how you do that. You'll get one mark in an exam for being able to plot your results correctly. Then you'll get another mark in an exam for being able to draw a line of best fit. Now, a line of best fit does not mean a straight line of best fit. It can be a curve, as it is in this instance. And you'll get a couple of marks for being able to come up with a conclusion. So as you can see here, the bigger the mass, the smaller the acceleration. Small mass here, you get a big acceleration. And as the mass got bigger and bigger and bigger, the acceleration got smaller and smaller and smaller. That's what you would expect. However, it's important to note that the relationship is not proportional. We know that because it's a curve instead of a straight line. And there we go. So you've covered about 10 marks worth of content there. So that includes the six mark question plus some extra marks for the graph. Now I can't guarantee that the core practical investigate and acceleration will be on your final GCSE exam at the end of year 11. But if it is, because of your resourcefulness and your initiative, your willingness to find things out for yourself, you are increasing your success. So well done. Work hard, be nice, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.